right? Depending on who you're talking to, who or what your relationship is with them, the way you show them love might be a little different. There might be some overlap, but largely they might be different. And so it's very important for us to know what is our relationship with God. Brothers and sisters, that, that's actually the first question I want us to start with. Today. Who is God to you? Who are you to Him? This question, I think, is very important. But I, th- I just want to ask us a different one. I think that will help us, you know, process this a little better. How did you first come to know God? We were at Applebee's. Uh, me and the youth sponsors were at Applebee's the other night, Friday night. And I brought up this, and somehow we got on this topic of dating. And then I brought up this word, this, this phrase, meet cute. For those of you who, who watched um, To All the Boys I Loved or somewhere else maybe, there's this idea of a meet cute, which is like a cute way to meet. Right? What was your meet cute with God? How did you first engage with God? How did God, for, how did you first enter into a relationship with God? For some of you, maybe if you grew up in the church, maybe you went through children's ministry or youth ministry, somehow the teachers or the pastors, they've taught you that God is your friend. God is someone that you can trust in. God is someone who can relate to you. God is someone who you know and knows you. And so you grow up thinking, God is my friend, right? Or maybe you've learned the first interaction that you have with God is that God is someone who loves you immensely. I mean, we literally just sang like three, two, three songs about it, and we're probably going to sing more. God is someone who loves you unconditionally, loves you for who you are, who will be there for you. There's a period of time where I think on Facebook where I used to have some of my Christian friends, they'll say that they're in a relationship with Jesus. (laughs) I, I think that there's this idea then that Jesus or God is someone who you have this mutual love with. Maybe for some of us, our first interaction with God is after we came to this realization that we are sinners, that there's sin in our lives, that, that, that the sin condemns us to death, that there's a debt to be paid, and unless Jesus is our Savior, unless Jesus is the Lord who comes into our life, there's nothing we can do. And so our relationship, first relationship with God, then becomes one of Savior to sinner. So regardless of what that first interaction that you've had with God, with that first relationship that you've built with Him, I think that's how we first start to learn how to love Him, right, with all that we have. If He's a friend, uh, you treat Him as such, respect Him as such, you're able to talk to Him. If He's someone who you have this mutual love with, you would love Him back and expect love from Him. If He's a Savior, then you love Him by, by giving Him the thanks, giving Him the glory and honor He deserves. The way that we love God may be different depending on the relationship that we have with Him. But the problem then becomes, how do we juggle all this? You see, really quickly, I, I, I just want to give us, that there's a bunch of different ways we can love God and enter into a relationship with Him, right? Father to child, God to worshiper, friend to friend, guide to law. This is just a few. I'm sure if you look through scripture, you can find more. Whichever it is for you, I want you to take a step back and think, when I first interacted with God, when I first entered into a relationship with him, who was I to him? Who was he to me? And after you've gotten that, after after you've gotten a grasp of that initial relationship that you've had with God, Let's talk about all the others. You see, what I, uh, what I recognize that I think happens very often is when it comes to our relationship with God, sometimes we want to keep it to one very specific relationship, and sometimes we want to keep it to one specific sector of our life. But that's just not how it is, right? How many of you have gone out maybe to the supermarket, maybe just to the park, and you bump into your boss, or you bump into your teacher. For some of us, this is the worst thing that can happen. For me, I, I'm excited, right? I, I can't wait to bump into people. I love seeing people that I know. But for most of us, when we bump into someone that we aren't comfortable with seeing them in the context that it is, 
Maybe you're out with, hang out with your secular friends and you bump into your church friends. Maybe you bump into your pastor when you're at the supermarket or your teacher. Some of you would tur- literally turn the other way and walk. But if they catch you, then you have to have this awkward conversation with them and, and try to say goodbye before it's too late. For some reason, when we meet people in in the context of a relationship that we're not comfortable with them with, or that we aren't used to, it it gets a little weird. And somehow we translate that and we brought this over to our relationship with God. When we see or talk about God at church, when we talk about God with our church friends, or maybe in small group or at retreats, Great. We can give the best answers that there is. We can be fully present with our our congregation members there. But somehow when God tries to to, to enter into our conversations at school, somehow when when we start seeing posters about God uh, when we're driving, or maybe we see people preaching out in the open, all of a sudden we distance ourselves from that. All of a sudden we're like, ah, no, 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 We, we we can't have God be part of this part area of our life. Sometimes it's subconscious. Sometimes we do it purposely. But that's what I want to warn us against today. Because the reality is, and the beauty of the fact that there's so many different kinds of relationships that we can have with God, is because He wants to be in every part of our life. You see, God doesn't just want to be this Father that is all-knowing, that's guiding us. He also wants to be a friend that is closely relatable, that is dear to us by our side. God doesn't just want to be this almighty creator that is distant and just made everything and walked aside. God wants to be someone who has come down onto earth to die for us, our personal Savior. The reason that I believe God gives us all these different types of relationships that we can have with Him is because He wants to be introduced into every single aspect of our life. And as He introduces Himself into those ways, it it allows us to see how we can have healthy relationships with those around us. You see, for all of us here who, who has gone to Memorial Day Retreat, hopefully for the youth, you've come back hearing and knowing that God is working at all times. That God is always present in your life, and sometimes it just seems like he's not there, but he's working in the background. He's never left. And then for, for Regen, for those of you who are part of Pastor Janus' sermons, hopefully you've seen that there's just so much to learn, so much to see in all of who Christ is, but also all of what he's doing in your life. It's not just one directional. It's not just one thing. Whether it go from rest to the work that he wants us to do, there's so much to see in Christ. You see, when we go to retreats like this, when we hear sermons, when we participate in small groups, what I think ends up happening is some of us, we go to these retreats and we think, wow, we have never heard that before. We've never seen that before. This must be a new relationship with God. Some of us will go and be like, ah, we knew this already. This is more so a reminder. I think that's how it's going to be with us in our relationship with God. Either God is going to keep reminding us to keep us awake, keep us fresh with how his relationship has been, or I think he's going to give us new insights, new ways to see him, new ways to explore. I think that's what God desires for us when we're in relationship with him, to be able to explore and see all the different ways he can be a part of it. And so then we come back to my question, How do we then manage having God in all these different relationships? What do we then to do? I think I'm going to give us a very quick two steps. The first is, take it one relationship at a time. I think it's easy to be like, God is all these things to me, and I have to make sure I perfectly treat him the same way. But how many of you, when you're praying, you think... Do I refer to God today as Father, or should I treat him as this God that can literally strike me down at any moment? Right? Sometimes I think when we're praying, it is the hardest to discern, who is God really? Because there's all these different relationships we're trying to be like, oh, God is this, but he's also this. So I can, I can treat him casually, but I also have to treat him with respect. I can, I can say what I want to him, but I also want to make sure that I don't say anything that's too far. The first thing I think we could do is just take it one step at a time. 
You know, I, I ask you guys, how did you first interact with God? What is that first point of contact, the first relationship you had with Him? Let's start there. Start with loving God with all that you are, all that you have there. And the second thing to do is just keep your heart, your soul, and your mind open. Right? While you're engaging with God in that first relationship, keep your heart open. Because I believe that God will constantly come in every now and then just to give you a little more. Right? I don't think we need to, to manage all of them at the same time. Take them one at a time. But as God engages you and he shows you a new relationship, be open to seeing that as well. One step at a time, not all at once, but be open at all times. The last thing I, I think I want to leave us off with is let your actions match your relationship. How often do you guys claim a relationship that you have no proof behind? I think there, there's this part of me that re recognizes when I first entered into, whenever I first enter into a relationship with, people, with someone, uh, at first, it's this weird place of trying to figure out what's okay, what's not okay. How do I act with my friends? Should I be uh, affectionate? Should I like poke jokes at her and like make it seem like we're just friends? I, I know when I was, back, back when I was still in college or in high school, my brothers and I, we would always serve at our church's summer school. And if anyone new came or if anyone new was helping out, they would never know that we were siblings. Besides the fact that, obviously, we don't look alike. But my brothers and I almost never interacted with each other outside of our house. And so when we first tell someone, hey, we're related, they'll be like, there's no way. I haven't even seen you smile or look in that direction. You've never even talked to them. How can you tell me? How can you guys be siblings? You're completely different. Not even interacting. Is that how it's going to be with our relationship with God? Are you going to claim, God is my Father, God is my Savior, and then your life, the way you make your decisions, the way you treat Him, says nothing of that. Right? Let our actions match the relationship that we have with God. If He's your Father, if He's your Savior, if He's God Almighty, this Almighty Creator, if He's your friend, then treat Him with that respect that He deserves Live your life making the decisions that reflects this relationship. Pray in a way that reflects this relationship. See, I, I, I recognize for all of us, our relationship with God is going to look a little different. The way that I treat my friends and my father might not be the same way you do. And so the way that we directly interact with God is going to look a little different. And that's why I hope that we will continue to explore within the church as brothers and sisters what it means to be in relationship with God. You see, even I think that it is when we're interacting and, and learning from our brothers and sisters that we see how we can, should treat God, how we respect God. And so I pray that for all of us, my hope is, that as we engage in relationship with God, we'll take it one step at a time. Don't rush into relationship with God. But while you're engaging with him, keep your heart open. God's going to show up in different ways. God's going to show up in different relationships. Be open and hear him. And lastly, let your actions match your relationship. Let all that we do, all that we say, all that we are, match the kind of relationship we want to have with God. Let's pray. God, whether we call you our Father, whether we recognize you as our Savior, whether we see you as the God who created all things and knows all things, whether we see you as a friend, show us, teach us how to love you better, how to love you the way you deserve, with all that we have and all that we are. And as we engage in these different relationships with you, God, humble our hearts so we are ready and open to hearing and seeing you for who you are, not just who we want you to be. We thank you and we pray all this in your son's name. Amen.